Welcome, Hill of Fans, to Hoppington Football Friday night, September 15, 2017, where the Hoppington Hillers will be taking on the Medway Mustangs at Chick Welch Field, Dave Hughes Stadium. Hi, I'm Rick DeSena with Don Dandy, Don Lehman in the booth again for a second year, here to bring you the game. So we got a little bit to catch up on here, being the first home game, but the second game of the season, the Hillers took care of business at Wayland, 18-14. Uh, my understanding, Don, that it was a little bit of a touch and go there for a while where uh, uh, Wayland gave up a 14 nothing lead, but uh, the Hillers ultimately prevailed 18-14. to Yeah, it sounded like, and neither of us were there, Rick, but it sounded like the Hillers got down early, and uh, Wayland, they've been playing Wayland here for the last four or five years as their opener, and, and they're fairly even matchups. Every year is a, a close game. So it sounded like uh, the Hillers fell behind 14-0 last week, and then um, Kelleher uh, started throwing the ball all over the place. I know Will Abbott had a big game last week, and I think that they won. The, the, the go-ahead touchdown was a flea flicker from Kelleher to Abbott, who threw it to um, Nick DeLoya, Rick, uh, Luke DeLoya. Luke DeLoya. So let's get into the stats a little bit. Last week, Ryan Kelleher had a great, great game to open up the season, 25-38. 284 yards, two TDs. Will Albert, 13 catches, 144 yards, one TD, one for one passing, 56 yards. Let's close the book on the season right there and put him in the Hall of Fame. I mean, that, those are great days right there. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like they had some success. Well, that's what, when you're looking at this team, and, you know, every year is different, especially in high school football, and you're never really sure what you have, but one thing when you could look at this team going in is you know that they had – veteran skill position players they had returning kids at the receiver spot at the running back spot and Kelleher while he you know played behind Jimmy Adams last year he did get some uh, some game time when Jimmy was hurt certainly and it um obviously it helped for the game one um those 13 catches by Abbott were a record actually for a single season game in Hawking in high school and uh, as the game progresses and changes a little bit you might see more and more of those passing numbers and receiving numbers uh, expanding. Well, I think another thing, um, again, this is just inside information, which means, you know, just <laughs> talking to people. Um, but the, they have two running backs. I know Connor Hebert, who's one of the captains, he was out last week. And I don't know if he's playing. We haven't looked. Uh, he's on the yet. roster as, you know, iffy. I mean, okay. he could play, but, uh, but we he, don't know if he's He was ready. out last week, and whoever the backup is running back was also out. Oh. And I don't know who that would have been. So they were kind of light at running back, so it sounded like uh, Coach Sullivan went to a, more of a passing offense, and it, and it worked out for them. Okay, well, let's get into Medway a little bit. Um, this is uh, Coach Gerard's eighth year. It's amazing how quickly it's gone. Our boys played for him in his first season when he came here, but uh, overall, Hoppington four wins, Medway three wins, uh, total points in seven years. This is pretty interesting. 177 points, Hoppington, 175 points, Medway. So a pretty even series over the last uh, few years with uh, Jim Gerard as head coach. Yeah, you know, Medway, the last couple of years, I feel like they've taken a step back uh, from a competitive standpoint. Um, they were, if you look back or think back to, you know, five, six, seven years ago, they were almost the measuring stick. If Hopkinton beat Medway, you know, even back when we had the teams going nine and one, and or ten and one, and uh, and nine and two, and and uh, you know, you knew that you had arrived when you beat Medway because they were always big, they were always physical, and um, and we've handled them the last two years. So yep. we'll see what we got here tonight. So uh, Medway finished uh, four and seven last year. The the thing you want to take note is they won their last four games all by shutout last year. Yes. Um, and it, they're under Chris Baker's the new coach, second year, took over for Dave McSweeney. Uh, so it was there a long time. Yeah, to your point, uh, things may be starting to turn around a bit. They, it looks like they have some numbers across the field. Um, one note, though, that Medway has dropped out of the TV uh, L large, and uh, I can't remember who replaced them. It's uh, Dedham. No, no, that would be a small. It's uh, I think Norton came into the large, and Medway okay. Medway went into the small. So the TVL stays intact, but. Uh, a little change here, and the numbers certainly don't bear that out as it looks like Medway's got some pretty good numbers across yeah, the field. Yeah, I don't know if they're dressing their freshmen over there also, but there looks like a lot of kids over there. So one thing uh, we should note also is this year's uh, five captains on the field. It's up a little new. I've 
we've been around a few years. We've seen as, as few as two, is usually three, and this is the first that uh, I've seen five. This is the first time I've seen five. Um, you know, it, it's I do know how the coaches run it. It's all kid vote. So my guess would be there was a lot of ties, and uh, <laughs> that's what we got here is five captains. So. Okay, so we had the coin, uh, the coin, the coin toss, and uh, I won. didn't see who won it. Yeah. We were talking. I didn't happen to see what was going on. I'm looking around the booth to see if anybody. No. So Medway won the toss. So I uh, guess in. And they, did, they elected to defer, so Hopkins will be receiving the ball to start the half. So we're going to pause for a second and uh, get ready for the national anthem. Competitors, game officials, or fans in attendance. Such actions include taunting, trash talking, and berating of players, coaches, and officials. The Tri Valley League has adopted a zero tolerance policy. Please respect all decisions made by officials. Please respect fans, coaches, participants, and opponents alike. We would also like to welcome all the youth football players in attendance here tonight. Now, please rise, remove your caps, and direct your attention to the north end zone as band director Craig Hay and the HHS band honor the flag with the playing of our national anthem. Terrific rendition of the national anthem by the Hawking and Band, and I'll tell you, it's a great night for football. A little humid, no rain. We didn't get the predicted rain that was coming today. We got the band here. We got some humidity, and the place is starting to rock and fill up, Don. Yeah, it, you know what? It was. I noticed it was a nice crowd. It looked like coming in. You got the Hiller Grillers back here. It's a. Uh, it's a beautiful night for football here tonight, Rick. It, 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 and it's nice. You know, we were uh, talking earlier. Last year, you know, they had such bad luck over here with the, the we had three games. One was rained out and, you know, at <laughs> halftime. We had the lightning, the lightning one we had to do in two different days. I had to, uh, I think you referenced this in an email. Well, uh, people didn't have to, didn't want to be listening to me talk to myself for a, hey, a half of football. Right. So, All right, We're just trying to keep our fans happy, Rick. So we got uh, uh, Luke DeLoyer and Will Abbott deep on the kickoff. They will be receiving in the north end zone. Medway kicker number 74, right? Number 70, I mean 74, sophomore Jim Kelly, who to kick. And we'll see what we have as we get the 2017 home season take off right now. Field looks great. Looks like it's in great shape. No, plenty of grass, plenty of water this summer. It's a short kick picked up by Deloya. And he's coming all the way to the, the far side. He dips in, he gets to the outside, he gets the corner, and he brings it all the way back to about the 47 yard line. Yeah, that was, that, that was a short kick and it was kind of in that no man's land and uh, Luke came up and grabbed it. It kind of took a nice hop to him and he showed some nice speed. He made a nice one cut move and he got to the outside. And, and the Hillers are in great starting position, and he also got the sidelines fired up, so it was a win-win. <laughs> well, since when do you know not Deloya not to get the sidelines <laughs> fired up? He gets right? me fired I mean, up. So they start at the 46-yard line with the spread offense. Abbott and Lindquist to the right. Gooney and Gooney to the left, and they get somebody in the slot backing up. Ionelli gets the pass from Kelleher. He turns it up, breaks a tackle. He breaks another tackle, about 15 yards on the play. 
Ionelli, it looked like he was, where was he lined up? Right? He, he was He was in the slot. Slot, okay. You know, almost off the tight end. Or so the, that's the tight not end an e that is not an easy pass to throw, that swing pass. No, yeah. but he was actually moving forward when he threw it, as opposed to going backwards. And Kelleher put it right in stride, and uh, and then Ionelli made a nice couple moves, and there we go, first down. Well, good news. Connor Hebert came into the game. He's to the right of Kelleher. We got trips left. Abbott in motion. And a fake reverse, and Kelleher takes it to the left, cuts up, gets to the outside, to about the 29-yard line, make it to 30. Uh, that was Hebert. That was Hebert with the ball, and uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, that was a uh, a fake reverse. I think it's his option whether he gives it off or not. And you know, Connor's been hurt. He, there was no way he was going to hand the ball, so he, <laughs> he kept it and, and had a nice nine-yard gain. And we got second and one here. Same formation to the right. A trip stack to the right. Cooney to the left. And another same throw to Abbott, a little quick jitter, and he gets to the outside, he turns the corner, he has the end zone, touchdown, reservations for six. That certainly was quick. Um, you know, with just a, a quick um, observation here to start, uh, the Hillers look a lot faster than this team. I mean, yeah. I know that we're gonna have some skill players, but just off the bat, we, uh, we look faster. Yeah, I mean, he just got it to the outside in that play, and a little little, little jitterbug kind of move, and he just made it to the outside, and nobody could catch him. So it looks like... Uh, Going for two. Oh, we must have stepped out of bounds, Don. Oh. No, wait, where is he? Hey, What's well, going on here? No, it's... This is it's at the... The ball's at the eight. I'm a little confused. Was Abbott, or was that Abbott up the middle? Yeah, they, that must not have been a touchdown. He must have stepped out of bounds, Don. I thought it was, a, I thought it was a touchdown, but that was no touchdown. No. It's sec, it's second down. No, it's second down. They have the stick still up. So Abbott made it, ran out of bounds at the uh, at the 15 yard line, and now it's second and two. Who's number five? Number five is. Kelleher in the in the shotgun. Four receivers to the left. He throws to Abbott, who was wide open. He's going to cut into the middle, and he's well, he got a flag on the play. So we just got to hang on for a second. I think that's going to be either a block in the back or a hold. Um, that's a shame too, because you know Kelleher stood in there. He was getting a heavy rush, and he stood tall, delivered the ball very crisply, and uh, Abbott caught it. I don't know about that move, that Ole move he did with the ball. Yeah, I, I you know, I don't, I don't like to see the ball out like no, that, especially no. when you're coming back into the middle of the field. No, no. I, I'll, somebody will mention that to him in film for sure, but it looks like it was a penalty and it's coming back. I didn't see the uh, – they're discussing it now. I didn't see the call. Yeah. Might be a per is this personal foul? No. I didn't see the uh block in the back would be my guess. I was yeah, just letting his guess. It's about a ten yard penalty. No, one, uh, two, yeah. About a ten yard penalty. I don't think so, Rick. I think it was fifteen, man. Is it? Yeah. yeah. So, so I didn't see the personal foul uh the refs are call. letting us guess, but so okay, here we go. Well, second and about uh twenty two. Another pass out here to Deloya. He cuts it up. Good blocking out in front, but number 99 comes in, pursuing the play. No quitting, number 99. You're going to have to deal with me because I don't have a numerical roster. And we got to figure out who number 99 was because he came in a hurry. Number 99 is Isaac Rosick, the senior. Yeah, and it looks like he came from his uh, left defensive end spot, so he did come across the field, so we want to watch him. Um, you know, Luke took that. That was another just kind of bubble screen, and he made a nice quick move and turned it up, and um, 99 did save them from another 5 to 10 yards that Luke would have gotten. We got two receivers to the right and left, and it looks like Lindquist in motion sets up, trips left. 
And Kelleher rolls to his right. He's got him wide open. Abbott, touchdown. Will Abbott wide open in the corner there. Well, these two certainly have uh, have built up a, a quick rapport through these first two games. And, um, you know, Abbott looks extremely fast out there this year. He really looks like he is uh, moving quick. And Kelleher, you know, he kind of drifted out to the right, and he was wide open. But um, – but Kelleher just threw a nice ball right over his back shoulder, and that was an easy touchdown. So in anticipation that we would score the touchdown, the six-point state on the score. Yeah, I, know. I noticed they never took that off, which, you know, that's good. So number, number 57, this Robbie Pigluca. Yeah, he, cooked, he kicked last year. And he looks like it's through. Yep. And I don't see this there. It is. Okay. 7-0 Hill is at 8.51 of the first quarter. So come up field and kick off to the Midway Mustangs. Well, you know, it's funny. You, you, don't, uh, you don't necessarily think, um, at least the last few years, of, of the Hillers being a high-octane offense, even though we have always been able to score. But um, this is a quick start with these kids. And, again, it's just this first drive, it really does look like they're operating uh, with some, some faster skill players. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, you know, that's the strength of, you know, you, you talk about the strength of the team. Usually you talk about who's coming back. Right. Who's got the experience. And that is the, the skill positions are, are, would be the strength of the hill is coming back. And you would you would expect them to, you know, be a little faster, be a little stronger. And, and Will Abbott's able to display that there on the field tonight. Anytime you've got a, a large senior class and you've got those kids that have varsity experience as, you know, coming into their senior year, that's a huge advantage. Now, that was one of the disadvantages the team had last year is they had a, a very small senior class. So, you know, they were a young team, and that's why I, I think this year we could have a little bit, a couple more wins, hopefully. Brendan Kelly on the kick, and number 23 looks like Nick Sheehan, the sophomore, takes it straight up the gut to about the 36-yard line. Now, if I remember correctly, Don, I played in the TVL a long time ago. There was a Sheehan that I played against. Pat maybe might have been his, the name. I wonder if it's a kid. The well, I, apples I, yeah. don't fall so far from the tree, they say. It, 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 it's possible, Rick, but weren't those records kept on a wall with a chisel? <laughs> I mean, maybe we should go. <laughs> Not sure. Hey, we wore helmets that weren't leather. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, maybe we'd go look at a cave and they would have those stats. <laughs> <laughs> so we have uh, number 16 starting a quarterback, Drew Plunkett. Now, the interesting thing with this kid is they brought him in last week. They were down 19 nothing, and he's a sophomore, and they, he came in and uh, you know, made it competitive. They were down to Norton by three touchdowns, and I guess he came in at halftime and made it very competitive. Well, the name Plunkett, if I'm not mistaken, I think Jim Plunkett may have worn number 16 when he played here at uh, New England. Well, he could. This could be – Does uh, anybody out there could uh, look I that don't up. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure Plunkett knows he's got a kid here, but we might not <laughs> know. I don't know. Uh, that should be a grandson, I'm guessing. I was going to say, right, <laughs> Plunkett, right. So Plunkett in a pistol with Sheehan behind him with double wide, two wide receivers to the right, two to the left. A quick screen out here to number 14. Number 14, Ryan Pepin. Chris Canal, uh, he's a sophomore making the tackle. Nice hard tackle, number 20. Or maybe he's coming from the straw. Looks like he's a, in that safety position or li outside linebacker position. The same formation with the pistol. I can hear the crowd, the student section, really getting it going. And Sheehan has nowhere to go. Linquist stacks him up with the help of... Canal again. Number 20, Canal. Well, yeah, it looks like they doubled the um, they they doubled 51. Who who's that for us? Cousins, who's a returning starter. They doubled him, kind of turned him, but then Lindquist and Canal just came up and filled, and that was a good hard tackle. Three and out for the Hillers. Oh, so it's interesting. The, the quarterback is also the punter here. Not that it's it's fourth and nine. Not you to expect anything, but. A, Interesting. Ooh, Ooh, and a bouncer came right to Abbott, and he's got to the outside, and he could. Well, he's tackled somewhere around the Medway 47-yard line, so a lucky bounce. Actually, kind of tricky, Don. Could have gone, you know, 
it may not have worked out as well as we wanted to. That was a tough <laughs> that was short a, hop to take. That was a hard shot down to third base, Rick, but he got his <laughs> glove down and he grabbed it. And, uh, and But like I said, he looks quick and he turned it right up. And uh, here are the Hillers with, again, starting at midfield. Yeah, they're at the Medway 46-yard line. And they really haven't run the ball much other than the fake reverse to Kelleher. They've been coming out throwing the quick screens. Mm -hmm. and, it, and why not? If you have that, that speed out there and you can't match up, you put a, two or three guys out there, clog it up, and let the guy's quickness take over. I think all three, you know, you got Abbott, you got Cooney, um, uh, you got Lindquist. All these kids, they played. They've been playing. This is their third year playing. Mm. You know, they got playing time as sophomores. And now they're seniors, so... You know, getting the ball and spreading it around to those kids is not surprising that they're having success. That's an interesting formation. They had stack receivers to the That's left, it. and they just pitched to Keller and let him get to the outside. And he takes it all the way down to the 22-yard line of Medway. Well, I'll tell you what. M Michael Ionelli um, just threw a heck of a block. They might, I don't know what the line looks like, and I don't know if Ionelli's big enough, but you might want to put him at the guard or center or tackle <laughs> position because he took his kid and drove him. He was the lead blocker almost, and he uh, he pancaked him. Yeah, well, he's wearing number eight. So I know. He's not going into the middle anytime soon. No, no. No, that was a, that that was was a the, nice block, The way though. they had the formation, they had the receivers in tight. They don't often do that, and that was able to seal the end, and like you said, Ionelli driving his guy. A little more conventional with the formation, although it's stacked trips right. Cooney to the left. Ebert in the backfield. No, that's not Ebert in the backfield. And a quick throw to Ionelli. Touchdown. It's going to be a touchdown to the corner. So it was Zach Frank who was in the uh, on the running back that came out to the corner of the seal and allowed Kelleher to get the ball to Ionelli. Yeah, it uh, – Kelleher rolled out there quickly. Again, he seems to throw really well on the move. And uh, threw just a dart right on Ionelli's hands. Uh, Michael took it, dove over the goal line, and here we go. 14-0, or soon to be 14-0, hopefully. The point after the kick by Robbie Pagaluka, and it's up. It looks good. He's got a pretty strong leg. Yeah, he was he kicked last year and he had a strong leg. They, they had a pretty good kicking game last year with Pagliuca uh, kicking the ball um, for extra points and field goals, and uh, Brendan Kelly, who is the punter. And if you remember yeah. last year, Rick, he was a he punted very well all year. <laughs> and having a strong kick game is uh, is certainly an advantage at any level of football, and and you know certainly at the high school level because it's not common. No, absolutely. In a kicking game, you know, there's a, there's a coach out in this field here that uh, hit a long one a few years back. Yep. Um, we're not talking that kind of kicking game, but certainly the extra point and maybe a, a close field goal um, certainly can help, will help. Yeah, I think, I think uh, Mr. Sanborn's giving the kickers a little some tips here and there. Is this Kelly kicking off number 12? It is. Yep. Kelly on the kickoff. And that's a pretty good kick well over the head of, of Sheehan. And he goes back to the five, feels it, and takes it straight up the middle. And he breaks, uh-oh, breaks out. Nice run. Nice tough run by number 23 to sophomore Sheehan. It looked like he was stopped, but he just kept his feet moving and kind of squirted out of there and made something positive into something that looked like it was going to be no gain. I didn't see who made the tackle, but he, like you said, he broke a couple of tackles and on a tough run. The time out here with Abbott's got to come off the field for something. I'm not sure he's pointing at his knee. Some blood, maybe. I guess. I'm not exactly sure what they. Doesn't look like anything big. Drew Nealon into the game at safety for, for Abbott. And Plunkett. They're going right out. Throws it deep. 
and too deep as number seven. Number seven, Justin Pratt, the junior, couldn't get to that ball. It looked like the coach saw that Abbott went out and they brought in, um, you know, the backup safety, Drew Nealon, and they said, okay, run a post right up the middle of the field, and, uh, and Drew was up for the task. They had it covered, and it was a bad throw anyway. Well, no disrespect to, to Drew. Um, he's probably not as fast as Abbott. Yeah, well, they, I'm, so I'm saying the coach thing. recognized, yeah. right, yeah. They, let's go after the kid that just went in there and see what he's got. So it's second and ten from the 20, you call it the 28-yard line, and the handoff to Shane Fay. Maybe it's a fake. Plunkett takes it straight up the middle, and a gang tackle. A bunch of Hillers there to greet him. Pick up of about two. Hiller's defensive line seems to be controlling the line of scrimmage. They're, um, they're getting penetration. Um, they, who do we got there? We got 51, who's Cousins, 40, 45 is uh, Ryan Brown. Looks like 52, maybe Alex McDonald on yeah, the far side. Yeah, so Cousins and McDonald both started last year. And Linquist was, uh, Linquist was in there last yeah, he year. He was in there as yeah, well. Yeah, they got some returning kids on defense also. So wide receivers to both sides, a quick pitch. Oh, and a high tackle on Sheehan, and he gets driven back. About a loss and about two on the play. Brings up a fourth and about nine. Yeah, that looked like it was Canal and Lindquist again um, converging on that tackle. So Medway's not finding any uh, any success running to the right here. Looks like we've uh, that is not Abbott in the back to receive the kick. And we have a timeout. Who's taking the timeout? Timeout, Hopkins. I'm going to try to track these this year, Don. Did you see who took that timeout? Um, I no, I I didn't, Rick. But there's so many timeouts, it's lose track. But it looks like Abbott got taped up. Yeah, you know what it is. Uh, we the little inside information. We have a. I'm not sure what people know, but we have an actual official in the booth that takes care of the official clock on the scoreboard. Mm -hmm. And he heard me talking and said, "No, you need to have knee pads." And he had him rolled up like they do in college. He, his knees were exposed. Oh, oh, Abbott was playing without knee pads? Yes, as oh. he's put on something over his knees oh, now. Oh, okay. All right. I don't know if they have to be padded, but his knees have to be covered. So a little inside information there, okay, Don, on well, how the rules play yeah, out. You know, the, the, he's, he watches a lot of college football. He sees these kids yeah. not wearing them, so, you know, that's what he wants to do. Oh, low kick. Go, oh, geez, get out of the way. Oh, that's boy. tough break for the Hillers is number 21. Zach Frank was just trying to block, and it was a low line drive kick. I'm not sure it was intentional or not, but uh, he went know, to block and hit him in the, in the knees. If it was intentional, that would be a first time that I've ever seen that where the punter is actually trying to peg somebody downfield. Oh, illegal touch, yeah. So they're calling it an illegal touch. No. It's first down, yeah. Yeah, well, it's first on Medway, right. essentially a fumble. Right? Yeah, but I mean, I'm, you asked if it was an intentional. Oh, yeah, yeah, if yeah, it yeah. would have been intentional, that would be a first for me. <laughs> you know, the kicker actually trying to hit somebody running. No, I mean maybe a, like a low line drive with that intention, not trying to actually pick up right, somebody. Right, right. Whatever, it was a big play for them. So Plunkett rolling to his left, and he throws, and he has looks like number seven and not. Incomplete, looked like a pass to Justin Pratt on the sidelines, and he just couldn't haul it in. Down 14 nothing. You would think that Medway, even though we are, you know, still have 357 left in the first quarter. First quarter, it's not early, too early to panic, but you would think that you will start seeing more passes out of them than um, than runs. Well. Uh, I don't know how much time he has if they're going to have to roll up, but he he throws a pretty good ball. Yeah. He's not a big kid either. What are they listing him at? Yeah, I can if they have it. Five foot seven, 161 pounds. Yeah, that's not that's not a that's not big for a high school quarterback. Little, little kind of a jet sweep to Sheen who came across. I don't know if he took the snap or if it was a handoff. It was a handoff. It was very he, close. Yeah, he was moving quickly. Um, so he picked up about five on the play. Brings up a third and six. 
Yeah, this Medway roster is sorted by first name, Rick. So it's, it, it's, it's sorted by name, <laughs> it's class. It's by, by first name. And I'm, I'm trying to figure this out. It's, 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 I'm uh, writing things down as we go a little that, bit. That's why you get the big bucks. You uh, can handle the Medway I got, roster. I got a raise. <laughs> I don't know if you did. No, I got, no, I didn't. Terosian can't afford me. I got my four-year guarantee kicked in, and now I got the uh, club option. And it looks like Plunkett faked to, to Sheehan and took it up the middle, but it's going to be fourth and... Fourth and about four, but it's on the Hiller side for the first time for Medway. Does Medway have a first down? Not yet. And they're going to kick. Hmm. Or maybe not. I, it's just a lot of people <laughs> changing out. So I made the assumption they're going to kick. I shouldn't, shouldn't do that. Well, you know, it's a, it's half a one. Two dozen, whatever that saying is. Six and one, half Six dozen and one, of another. Right. You, you know, you, you want to, it's a little early to go for it, fourth and four. Maybe better off trying to get the field, changing the field position battle because the Hillers have had it the whole time. Uh, Medway's been digging out of their own end, and Hillers have been starting in midfield. So if they pooch punt this here, um, that might be the strategy. But it looks like um, they're going for it here, Rick. So they have a, he's on the center. And a handoff to Sheehan, and he can't get anything going. And it was Linquist who cleaned it up, but somebody grabbed his feet. Is it was number 51, Kyle Cousins, maybe? Because the way he reacted, I think he came out of that pile after grabbing his feet. With the penetration, I personally, I, I don't understand that call. You've got fourth and four. You line up like you're going forward on fourth and one. It was a heavy set. They ran to the right where they haven't gotten anywhere. You've had Linquist, you've had Cousins, you've had Canal over there. That's just a um, that's just a bad call. <laughs> they they gave no other options other than to run it hard over the tackle, and, and the Hillers with the penetration they've been getting easily stopped them. So a turnover on downs. The Hillers pick up the ball at their own 49-yard line. 2:05 left in the first quarter, and it looks like it's Frank to the right of Kelleher, and Kelleher's going to go deep, and he's got the Will have is wide open. I'm not exactly sure. I'm not exactly sure how you lose Will Abbott in your scheme on defense. Yeah, well, they certainly don't look like they're putting every anybody over the top on him, which they're not, and I, I have no idea why they wouldn't. Um, uh, Alex McDonald made a nice block there. They had a blitzing linebacker, and he chop blocked uh, the kid to give Ryan Kelleher that extra second to find Will. Uh, who, again, like you said, Rick, was wide open. So that's a 49-yard pass. Their second tally of the day, Kelleher to Abbott at 153, puts the Hillers up 20 to nothing, and the extra point is lurking. And Pat Luker puts it through for, yes, 21. 21 nothing Hillers. So as we come back upfield, Tell her again, you know, I have him with over 100 yards just in, in, passing, touch, uh, in passing touchdowns, never mind what he's got for the day. Uh, this could be an early night for, the, uh, for number five and number two. They could be, I don't want to put the, what do they say, put the cart in front of the horse. But, yeah. Uh, the way things are going, it could be an early night. Uh, it, it's certainly a, uh, you know, a dream start. I mean, Coach Gerard's got to be extremely happy. Coach Sullivan. Um, this is the way you got a nice, nice big crowd here. Uh, certainly the way you want to start. Absolutely. So as we come up field and Brendan Kelly puts up the tee, puts the ball on the tee. The hill is getting ready to kick off. Hill of cheerleaders are getting in their exercise as the kick goes deep to Sheehan. And he's just hustling up the field, cuts to the left, and he's still going. And a flag on the play, he gets it out to about the 30-yard line. He's a tough little runner, sophomore, Don. Yeah, he is. He's running hard. Um, and, again, it looked like he made something out of nothing there. He still squirted it up, and, you know, they're over the 30. Now I don't know what this penalty is, but um, – 
Yeah, this is a this is a time here with a minute forty four left in the first that if Medway doesn't want to get this game, lose this game, uh, and get it out of hand, uh, they they're gonna have to at least put together some first downs. Yeah, they're gonna need at least one. <laughs> yeah, they haven't gotten one yet. No. Yeah. So it looks like it's against Medway as they're backing up a tad. And here comes the call. Oh, the call was already made. I didn't see it. You know, oh, oh, here he goes holding. Yep. Oh, blocking the back. No oh, defense. No calling on the Hillers. Oh. So illegal use. Is that illegal use of the hands? But I don't know why that would be happening to a team that's trying to tackle. No, he could have. He could have pushed them from behind during the kickoff. You really can't. You can't do that when you're coming in. You can't just throw him in from behind. Oh, you mean when he's trying to tackle him? Yeah. No. So what do we got here? We have a trips right, Plunkett calling signals. Ball at the 40-yard line of, of Medway. And he's going to throw. And he's got number 14. Oh, 14 wide open over the middle. He dropped the ball. Who's Ryan Pepin? You know, we hate to call out the, the obvious, but, boy, that ball was right in his hands. Yeah, that was a, that was a nice throw by Plunkett. And... Um, it hit him in stride. Uh, you know, the kid was wide open, and he just didn't haul it in. That looked like there was some miscommunication. Abbott was kind of trailing the the uh, the play from a safety position, but it didn't look like he thought he should be over there. And I saw a linebacker kind of look like he let him go. So yeah. that looked like a miscommunication it looked, it looked, on defense. It did look more zonish, but I'm pretty sure Abbott would have caught him before he got to the end zone. He was close enough. Trips left. Pepin comes in tight, so now I'm going to throw the ball again. Look in the side, and it's over there and picked off by Cooney off the hands of number seven, I think. Number seven, Justin Pratt, was in the area. I think it went off his hands, and Cooney on the bounce. Picked it off the carpet right around the 49-yard line of the Mustangs. That's just your basic tip drill, Rick. You know, that's why they practice it. The ball's in the air, and if there's a ball in the air in the defensive secondary, you expect your players to grab it, and that's exactly what Cooney did. He was in a great position, dove for it, and uh, here we go. Hillers have it again at midfield. <laughs> they've been they've started all their drives within that 45 to 45 yard line. This is nice to see. This is nice to see. I felt like we were always struggling last year, and uh, – this is nice to see a, a quick start here by the Hillers. And a handoff to Zach Frank. And he runs hard. Gets about two or three, maybe. Well, it, was, it was good to get Kel, uh, Hebert in. But, uh, you know, he probably, he's probably not quite 100% yet or feels a little bit. And, you know, yeah, it's in season. Looks like Frank is a little banged up yeah, here, well, you too. You said he was hurt prior as well I so. think both kids were out last week um and Hebert I know it's been a high ankle sprain which he got hurt um at the end of camp or in some sometime during the summer and it looks like Rick yeah. they're going without a running back yeah, here. yeah we've done this seen his formation earlier this is the one they hit Abbott coming into the middle a little bit and let him do his little this is Deloya getting the ball spins around and Ionelli did a smart thing he had looked like he was blocking in the back but he let up yeah, that, that is really, you know, even though it's not, you know, uh, Luke is not a running back, but that is basically a running play. It's just a, you know, little bubble screen, swing out to the left. Luke took it and, uh, you know, took it up for about three yards here. Oh, maybe there is a there is a flat. Oh, maybe they got Ionelli for a block in the back. Yeah, is that why it came back there? Um, they're talking about it in the flat. I don't see a flag, but just just the way he he reacted, it has to be. Yeah, that must be the play. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't look like it looks like they're. Let's see, where is Hebert? You know, right, at this right point, here. at this point, you don't really want. You know, you're up. I wouldn't. You know, it'd probably be better served keeping uh, Connor on the sidelines, um, especially if you're up three touchdowns. And then who knows with this Frank kid being hurt, and um, they're going. Uh, looks like five wide receivers yep. again. Same formation as they just ran. Cooney's the lone receiver to the right. Yeah, and he's going one-on-one -on -one with him out there. He's open, and I don't know if he 
No, he's out of bounds. Out of bounds. He lofted it in. Cooney got behind his man one-on-one -on -one, down the sideline, but he must have let him just a little bit out of bounds. It looked like a, it certainly was a pretty pass. Um, and if he was out, he wasn't out by much. No, the, the, the field's a little crowned over there. You really can't see the any sideline from here. And we've got to work on Mike Terosian to get that uh, – that instant replay so we can take a look at it and analyze it and we can you know tell you where that ball was. Uh, I don't want an instant replay unless he gives me a pen and a marker so I can write oh, on it. Oh, yeah, we can do that, yeah. sure. Kelleher back to pass. Uh -oh. Oh, nothing. There's... He's going to run now, and he got out of it, but he's down around the 50-yard line where it's going to be fourth and about 10. I'll tell you, you know, you know me, Rick. I watched the line and one of those weird guys. Uh, well, <laughs> I'm watching uh, the 99s giving McDonald everything he can handle. Uh, I think that must have been who he chop blocked before. But uh, it looked like I think Alex got away with a hold there. It looked like he was holding him, and there was no flag called. Well, which you, is what good. You, there was no hold because nobody called through it. So right, that's the way it is, right? Now we got to keep an eye. You had mentioned 99 before, so we're gonna have to keep an eye on that kid. Yeah, he's, I think a, he can he's play. a senior, Isaac Rozak, and he had the the motor to chase down a play from behind, and that does it for the. For the first quarter, as it looks like we'll start the second quarter with a punt by the Hillers um, with a lead 21 to nothing. What do you think of the first quarter, Don? I, I, I think, uh, like you said, the, s the speed looks obvious. Um, the Kelleher to Abbott connection seems to be picking up right where we left off the first game. It looks like the offense is playing with a uh, you know, tremendous amount of confidence. Again, without... Without being there last week, maybe it took them a little bit of time to get, you know, things going and, uh, and used to each other. And then it, it clicked in the second half. And here they haven't missed a beat. I mean, you know, three drives, three touchdowns. So Kelly, Brendan Kelly for the, for the kick. Nice kick. He drives Sheehan back for a fair catch at about the 18-yard line. 16 yard line, 17 yard line. We'll call it the 17. Again, poor starting uh, position for Medway. Yeah, and like you said, you, you know, you know, maybe they, they they punted a little earlier or what, but they they really do got to get something going offensively. That it doesn't matter where they're going to start if they just can't get a first down, right? No, and, and it doesn't look like they're going to be able to run the ball in the Hillers. So um, this young quarterback is going to have to get, they're going to have to get him outside, maybe make a couple big plays and get some confidence because they really have no rhythm right now at all. Yeah, I mean, it's, there really only seems to be two guys touching the ball, right? 16 and 23. So they got trips left with number two, Ashley Whitaker, wide left with the lawyer on him. Shotgun back to pass. And he's got 14 again, wide open, but he overthrew him. Abbott on the coverage, but he was trailing. Yeah, that 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 uh, that was not a good pass. It was kind of fluttering. Um, he was open, uh, but it looked like Abbott would have gotten and made the play. But um, he uh, he just overthrew him. So it's a bad break for Medway. Yeah, that ball has got to be thrown a, a little little to the not over his head. It's inside. Just keep let him run to the sideline versus down the field. Yep. And we're in the pistol formation with Sheen behind Plunkett. Hand off to Sheehan, and he's going, oh, he got a, broke the first level. Get out to the second level, but nothing much. I'll say one thing about the Sheehan kid, number 23. He runs hard. Oh, and a flag just came up late. And we got an unsportsman late. It looked like he's pointing towards the Hillers. I guess we want to take note of Medway. This Sheehan kid, number 23, and their quarterback, number 16, are both sophomores. Sophomores. So they're young. Um, and they'll certainly be, you know, somebody you're going to have to deal with here as years come. Yeah, this is one of the things that uh, Coach Gerard just doesn't want to have happen. Don't get sloppy. When the better teams start to come around that, that they can match our speed, mm -hmm. it's going to be a little different. You right. know what I mean? So you don't want to have this, and it must be Abbott because he's <laughs> – <laughs> come over here, I want to talk to you kind of thing as he comes off the field. So I don't know what he did or what he said, but um, it was noted. Yeah, you, um, 
and you use games like this, Rick, to you know kind of hone in on the simple stuff, the uh, you know to, to clean up your penalties and to plenty of time to throw. Here he is, and he has number seven to Justin Pratt down the sideline to the Hopkinton 40-yard line. So the penalty, and now a big play, and things start to get some energy going over on the Medway side. That was that was definitely Medway's best play of the game. Um, Plunkett made a nice throw. 14 finally caught the ball. No, that was number seven. Oh, I'm sorry, number seven Brad. caught it. Yep. Uh, Ianelli had coverage, but it kind of looks like he broke on it a little bit late, and uh, and uh, number seven made a nice catch. Yeah, 16, Plunkett rolling out. He's got to throw it, and he hits number seven. Justin Pratt again eludes a tackle down the right sideline to about the 18, 22-yard line. He was being stood up there at the end, and uh, the Hillers were taking shots at him. He held strong, and there's two positive plays by Medway. And, you know, you, you're right, Rick. I mean, here we go. They got a penalty, and now they've got a little momentum. And they're going to ride it. They get right to the line of scrimmage. They get into the pistol formation. Two receivers to the left, two to the right, and Sheehan behind Plunkett. And a fake. And he sets up, and he throws to the end zone to an open... Number two was Ashley Whitaker in the right by the pylon, off his hands, a little too long a pass with, uh, who's on the coverage, Ionelli? Uh, I think that was Deloya, number seven. Oh, I thought it was on the coverage. Okay. It could, I, it, it could, I was actually watching back here. They, you know, they pull guards out and they lead the guard out in front of the quarterback. They've done it. He's rolled, that time he was rolling to his left, kind of had to throw around his body. He, he was open, but uh, Plunkett, put a little bit too much juice on it. Yeah, it's a nice play to set up that lane because they kick out the tackle of the linebacker over there. And they're gonna do the same thing to the right. Yeah. Get some depth, maybe a screen. There it is, the screen. And Sheehan can't get loose and somebody's trying to strip the ball and they can't get it. Yeah, that was Lindquist. He was making a tackle and trying to strip at the same time. And he, that was a, uh, that was a screen. 63 kind of faked it where he was gonna block and let our guy go, but uh, Lindquist was not sold on it, and he kind of stayed home and made a nice tackle. So a short gain on the play, a little more than a short gain, probably three, three to, oh, he's coming back, about four yards on the play, and we're gonna have a timeout here with 8.51 in the second quarter. Hillers call a timeout. So when we reset, it'll be third and about six, long five. 8.51 in the second quarter. And you know, Don, to this drive, you can go back to the penalty. That's what, I mean, they, you know, the Hillers were going to get the ball back. And, um, you know, that is a tough penalty. Then the Medway came back and they made a couple plays. Now you've got to figure we've got uh, third and five here um, inside the 20-yard line. You've, I don't know what their kicking situation is, Rick, but I would think that this is two-down territory for them. Yeah, uh, we don't see too many. Yeah, it's I don't think you're going to shut out Hollis in the rest of the way. I mean, Hollis Hopkins in mm -hmm. the rest of the way. So you got to kind of put up the points. You got to score touchdowns. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think they're going to be reeling out their, their, uh, their field goal kicker. So we'll, uh, you know, you got to you got to coach for that. Um, offensively, you know, you got to figure you've got two plays, which you could get those two plays on run plays maybe. Or, you know, so as, as a defense, you've got to be prepared for anything because you don't know. They're definitely not going to pass. Um, so we'll see. We'll see if uh, yeah, you know, Hillers dial up any I, blitzes or anything. I just watched the Hillers run out on – this might be one of the smallest teams they've had in, in a long time. Yeah, I, I think it is, and I, I do want to talk about the offensive line. Um, oh, Sheehan got the pitch, and he fell. He came to the left. He got to about the 15-yard line, but he couldn't come clean out of the out of the backfield. The, the grass might be a little high over there, I guess. I don't know. It looked like, yeah, he was um, he saw an opening because it looked like it was opening uh, open at yeah. the start. It was a quick pitch, and he just got excited and lost his feet. Now you got fourth and uh, about uh, four and a half, maybe five. Yeah, yeah, about four and a half. And then signaling the play from the sideline is as Plunkett. Drew Plunkett, the sophomore, pretty impressive. The future looks bright with uh, a quarterback and a running back if they can. Yeah, they move pretty well, them. both of those kids. You know, I'd be able to tell you what their what their line is, but it's like I said, it's difficult. Oh, I've never I've never seen a roster like this, Rick. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's sorted. 
it's sorted by grade by first name. First name alphabetically. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he saw number 63 on the line. And I'm trying to search the roster. I can't tell you if he's a sophomore. 63. This, this is, is a, a senior. I'm on body. This is a real nice crowd here tonight, Rick. If you look around here, um, you've got, uh, you know, kids down by the doghouse. Looks pretty crowded. The oh, got student the band section. Here. It's always a nice element when the band here is, is, is playing. It's, it always yeah. adds a nice element when there's the got, bands here. We got some adult music, actually, in the stadium little tonight. Tom Petty. Uh, little Tom Petty playing. It adds a little, uh, little atmosphere. Players want cranked. It's fourth and four. Let's go. Get it up. They want, they right, want the oops. crowd. Here comes the student section. They're gonna Scotty's doing his job. He's getting them all fired he's up here. He's trying. He's trying. Game day coordinator Scotty Mackin doing his usual stuff. Might have to dial up the black hole. So Plunkett in the shotgun with Sheehan to his right. One split left. Wide receiver's tight right. One very wide right. A fake. He's going to throw the ball. He's running out of room. He throws it. And it's incomplete. You're giving a cat incomplete. No, incomplete. So yeah. the turnover on downs. The Hillos will pick up the ball at about the 15-yard line. Right at the 15-yard line. It didn't look like they were doing anything different than what they have been doing. Um, the Hillers had that covered. There was really he held onto the ball as long as he could. He finally threw it and. 14 got his hands on the ball, but he uh, he was out of bounds. Yeah, it, it, the problem there, you, you, you keep running, running, running to the sideline. The, the field gets shorter and shorter and shorter, and it just gets congested. It's very difficult unless you can zip it into a very small window. So we change possessions. The Hillers starting for the first time in what I'd call bad field position, the 15-yard line. 7.57 left in the second quarter. Kelleher in the shotgun, no surprise. And Lindquist in motion on a jet, oh, Abbott in motion on a jet sweep, takes it, and is trying to elude, takes a few hits, won't go down, he's at, right around the first down marker. Yeah, he took it on that jet sweep, there was a nice seal block, the line did a nice job, and uh, Will turned it up, he was closed on pretty quick, and he was kind of standing up, getting, taking some hits there, so it was good to see him go down. Um, but that was a nice positive gain. Nine yards on first down. I think we'll take that. Yeah, I think any coach would take nine yards on any play, right? So who do we got here, Rick? We got uh, let's, uh, for the line. I can't. It's hard to see here. I don't like the. I like to talk about the the big uglies up front. They never get enough press. Uh, these guys might be pretty boys because they're not they, quite. Uh, <laughs> they're not the big uglies. <laughs> not, well, you got. It looks like Cousins and McDonald are the tackles. So they played last year. I know Farina as uh, a guard. I can't see the center. Kelleher has got no I'm running back with is. Ebert coming in behind him to the to the left. And a quick pitch to Ebert. He gets to the left corner and he turns it up and off to the races. No, he's caught from behind at about the 36-yard line. All right, so that was a quick pitch to Connor, and there goes my theory about keeping him out and keeping him healthy <laughs> because he looked pretty healthy there, and he, he made a nice cut, and that was a very nice game by Carver Connor, and he seems to be moving just fine. Yeah, you know what, but as he starts to feel better and better, he's the type of kid you can incorporate into the passing game. You imagine sending all these guys deep and dumping off on and letting him go. Yep. No, he's got good speed as well. They've got a, they've got a plethora. Of, oh, I like that. Like that. A plethora. A plethora of, uh, of options on offense. Can you, on, on can you name the country of origin? I, how do you oh, spell no. that on one? On That's now. tough. Please, please, now. Come on, take it easy. Here we go. Kelleher rolling to his right. Goes deep to Lindquist, and he's got it. And he goes down the right sideline. Touchdown, Lindquist. That was a 62-yard touchdown pass from Kelleher to Lindquist at 6-12 to put the Hillers up 27 to nothing. There goes the band. Um, uh, yeah, the that was a that was a raw, was a design rollout by by Ryan Kelleher, and uh, you kind of had Linquist just dragging across the field. I, I I mean I don't know Rick. I have not seen Kelleher throw one ball off the mark. I mean every ball has been right on the mark. Hit him right in stride. Linquist grabbed it and took it the distance. No doubt. 
the hold, and it's extra point is good. The Hill is up 29 to nothing. Uh, 28 to nothing, sorry. Yeah, Ryan did a nice job on that hold. It looked like it could have been a low snapper. He fumbled it, it looked like, at the beginning, but he got it on the tee, and Pagliuca put it through, and here we go, 28 nothing. What a nice start for the Hillers. I almost saw Coach Gerard smile there. No, no, not yet. <laughs> you might see him in the second half smile, but not yet. He might have had something stuck in his teeth. <laughs> so we, uh, where we come up field, I know... They had an addition to the coaching staff. Um, the coaches in no particular order. Coach Jim Girard, obviously the head coach, is in his eighth year. Dan Sullivan, the offensive coordinator. Dave Swanton, an old time coach with uh, he coached, Coach Girard. He coached Jim Girard at Stonehill. Dan Stone McLean, the, the defensive coordinator. Ted Rigney, Jack Flynn, Brandon Anderson, who's new to the staff um, this year. So. Staff has very much stayed intact. Coach Sanborn, Coach Flannery, and Coach Webb taking care of some of the younger guys. And the kickoff goes deep to number 20, number 28 from Medway. And I'm going to try to find that while we unravel. And I'm having trouble. Number 28, the junior, was Jeff Converse. Took it up the middle for about to the, about the 30, I thought it was the 30 yard line. It is the 26 yard line. Uh, 27 yard line. So well, this is, you know, down 28 nothing. This is a situation where you almost have to go into your hurry up offense at this point. Six minutes left in the half. You, you've you got to make something happen here if you want to stay in this game for your medway. Yeah, it's just maybe work on a few things here in the passing game. And, and I couldn't see number. That was uh, Farina and um, Ionelli with, uh, up to make the stop. Number 88 out of the backfield making the, the run, just a little off tackle. Senior Garrett Mackinawit, oh boy, Markin, Mackinkowitz or something, I don't know. We'll call him, we'll just call him. Uh, Big Mac. We'll just call him Garrett. You know, anytime they have C's and Z's and K's and W's in a name, it's tough for me to pronounce. Yeah, well, that's okay. You just make up a nickname. Yeah, we'll get it. So they're operating out of a no huddle here. Looks like everyone's looking at their sleeve for the play. Plunk at the pass. Yeah, <laughs> quick out. And a lot of flags flying. So I'm linguist on the tackle, but I'm thinking maybe that was defensive offsides, the way that went. I was going to guess maybe it was either a, a defensive hold or an even an offensive push-off. It, it looked like it happened in that re, where the receiver caught the ball, so either our guy could have been holding them or he could have pushed off. It just went real fast after the, after the play started. So, so what do we have here, Don? I haven't seen it. Illegal motion on the. Well, I didn't. Uh, so it pushes the Medway Mustangs back to about the 20. Uh, 24 yard line? Where it brings up second and about 12. Trips to the left, plunk it in the shotgun. He throws a quick out to number two, and he's hit right away by Ionelli. Tell you, Ionelli came up and closed on that real quick and put a nice, hard form tackle. And, uh, you know, that was a positive yardage for the, uh, for the Medway Mustangs, but it wasn't much. Yeah, Ashley Whitaker on the catch. You know, that's where the high school, that's a, not an easy pass to throw on a line. Usually at this high school level, those balls arc and it allows the defender to get there much faster. This is, this is not the pro game where they can get that ball out there in a zip. Right. Double wide receivers to each side. 
Plunkett fakes, rolls right, and he gets smoked as he let go of the ball, and a jump ball, and Abbott on the defense. So that'll bring up fourth and about seven. Yeah, you had, um, it looked like that was uh, Farina. No, no, that was Canal. That was Chris Canal who put the pressure on the uh, on Plunkett, and he uh, he really fell through with his, his tackle and drove him to the ground, putting some nice pressure. That, that caused him to throw early, and we have an incomplete. So Plunkett back to punt, fourth and about oh, seven. Kicks it down to Abbott telling everybody to get away. It's a decent bounce. Goes out about the 40-yard line of the Hillers. So at 347, the Hillers will take over at their own 40 with the score 28 to nothing. You could not ask for a, uh, a better first half here. And if it looks like, yeah, oh yeah, they got the starters all back in there. Let's, let's put another touchdown. Let's put this thing to bed before halftime, Rick. Yeah. Maybe, no. maybe Torosian will give us the, the half off. <laughs> <laughs> You know, find somebody in the crowd to come in and do their thing, and you know it's easy, right? <laughs> it's easy. Well, he's gone. He just takes the credit he's when they start to roll. The, no, uh, he stood there and made us nervous there. He likes to stand <laughs> behind us when we first start and make us nervous. Then he <laughs> then he goes off to do whatever he's doing. <laughs> so the hill is there's no no taking the foot off the gas right now. Trips right, Kelleher in the shotgun with Frank to his right, and Frank goes straight up the gut, pick up of about five yards. Yeah, it looks like the line of scrimmage, you know, the offensive line of scrimmage, uh, offensive line's doing a nice job. Looks like 65 is Theo Cavello. He is the center. And the, I mentioned the rest of the kids. So the offensive line's firing off the ball well. And all you need with the speed of the Hillers is just a little, just a little opening, and they go right through it. Zach Frank, the, the junior. And now... Connor Ebert takes the pitch to the right. He goes, finds a seam, and can't quite get there. There's a flag on the play. And he's right around the first down marker, but I think it's coming back. Here we had a hold out here. And that was uh, that was Hebert running the ball. Yep, it was. They look pretty kind of similar, Hebert and this uh, 21 yeah, Frank. They're yeah, they're about the same size. But yeah. Hebert's got the, the orange gloves. That's how you can. Oh, you always spot the details. Well, it's about uh, what did my kids used to the swag? Is that what yeah, it is? It's about the swag, yeah, you know. It's how you not necessarily how you're playing, but it's how you're looking out there. Uh, it's, it's the generation we're in. <laughs> it's all about ESPN, right? Uh huh. Yeah, that was a hold. It looks like. Yep. So it brings up second and about 15 at the 35-yard line of Hopkinton. Clock running, 2:56 to go in the half. Kelleher in the shotgun. And he's going deep over the middle. He's got Abbott. Wide open. Oh, touchdown. To the yeah, they just can't match his speed, Don. No, it's it's like a three-headed monster here. You've got the line who's holding the line, giving Kelleher time. Kelleher stands in there. The kid doesn't look like he's afraid of anything because they were closing on him, but he stood in there and just uh, threw just you know a perfect pass. Another pass that was right on the mark caught him right in stride and um, you know Abbott just ran away from the crowd so reservation for six and this is uh, this is a route coach this yeah is route. this is this is pretty much done yeah they just don't have an answer for him and that's the third ball he's caught over the middle of the field with really nobody around him so he, <laughs> without watching the play develop from above you know I don't know if he give him a little shake and bake or just running straight by people uh, it looks like he's got the speed to be able to run straight by people. Um, but I can tell you Medway doesn't have an answer for him. And the Hill of Cheerleaders are really, they've been doing their push-ups, and I think they're going to be tired out by the, they may get the second half well, off. <laughs> well, this reminds me back, you know, back a few years back when the team used to, you know, I think the one year we scored 40 points, we averaged 40 points, I think. In like the 2011 or 2012 season, and those, those poor girls were doing push ups the whole time. Yeah, well, they know what they're signing up for. Yeah, that's for sure. Here we go, we got some ACDC playing. Um, well, we, we got adults in the booth now controling is, the music, is, so. Uh, this is good. If 
I could take off my headphones and be able to hear it pretty nice. But yeah, but then you might start dancing, so we don't uh, want you that. You don't want any of that happening? Nope. You've never seen the shake and bake in this kid, big guy. <laughs> oh, jeez. Brendan Kelly to kick. A line driver that kind of heading towards the corner, and it may get out of, oh, she and I don't know if he had to get it, but he picked it up and got to about the 15-yard line. It looked like it was going out of bounds, and he kind of grabbed it, and uh, he had Tyler Doherty right on him, um, number 26, but then he, he just kind of ran him out of bounds. So, again, bad starting position for Medway. Yeah. So they'll start around the 15-yard, just over the 15-yard line. And I think we, we were talking about earlier in the game, 224 left to go in a half, 35 to nothing. I think you're going to see a change of pace in the second half. Yeah, traditionally, it's um, when you're up 30, you know, 5, 35 nothing. That's when you'll, especially in the second half, you'll start to see some of the second team. There's nothing really to accomplish. Oh, nice pass to number 28. Number 28, Jeff Converse catches it over the middle, and he was well covered, but I can't tell by who. Yeah, Cooney. Cooney? Uh, yeah, Shane Cooney had the coverage from his quarterback spot, um, but it was just a nice throw, and the and the receiver got position, so he was able to make the catch in a in a first down. You know, that's that's it's part of the battle now with these these spread offenses. You get inside position on those on a, it's something coming to the middle of the field, and you got a quarterback that can throw the ball with any kind of velocity. You could do it all day long. Plunkett with three receivers to his left. And he's going down with a sack by number 20. Canal. Chris Canal again. Yeah, Chris Canal. It looks like Cousins kind of drove him out of there. You had... Uh, Number 45 uh, coming from the nose tackle spot. It looks like he got some penetration, Ryan Brown. Um, again, the Hiller defensive line playing with some spirit, and then you had uh, Canal come in there and make the sack at the end. So, Yeah, and they're doing it with just a, a four-man rush. There's been no – I haven't seen any blitzing from what right. I've been able to see, no. Nobody's, nobody extra is getting there. And that's providing a little bit of time. You know, this sophomore Plunkett – has been flushed a few times, but he's staying in the pocket as well when he needs to and letting things develop. So Plunkett with trips to his left, a single wide receiver to his right. He throws a quick out to and number seven, Justin Pratt, who picks up a short gain of about, about four yards maybe at up to about the 37-yard line. That was a nice little route that the kid ran, and, and Plunkett, again, with a good throw. Um, you just had Deloya and um, and Anthony Faria close on that pretty quickly uh, to save them from getting really any significant yards. So they go into a very obvious prevent with four guys 40 yards off the line, and they'll just let the ball be dumped off with six seconds running on the clock. Last play of the half, barring a penalty. And he's going to run it. Nope. Yeah, he's going to run. So the little quarterback, Plunkett, makes someone miss, and he gets down the sideline. He gets about 25 yards on the play, but that'll do it for the half as the Hillers will give that up all day long. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of surprised that Medway ran it down like that, but I figured at this point they just want to get into the locker room and uh, try and lick their wounds and uh, move on to the second half. So that does it for the first half. Uh, with the Hillers dominating performance in the passing game, leading 35 to nothing. Do not go away, we'll be right back with the second half.
Welcome, Hiller fans. Back for the second half as the Hillers come back out on the field, up 35 to nothing. Let's get a little recap of what we saw in the first half. At the 831 mark, Kelleher to Abbott, 22 yards, puts up the Hillers 7-0. At the 545 mark, Kelleher to Ionelli, 22 yards, 14 to nothing. 153 of the first quarter, Kelleher again to Abbott, 49 yards, 21 to nothing. The game kept on rolling into the second half at 6-12. Kelleher to Link with 62 yards down the right sideline. And then to finish up the scoring in the first in the first half in the second quarter at 2.30, Kelleher to Abbott, 65 yards, put the Hillers up 35 to nothing. Don, those are great numbers. That is uh, what you want to start. That's the way you want to play half, Rick. Um, you know, defense looks like they're controlling the line of scrimmage. Offense certainly is. Kelleher looks great. The skill positions look great. They're able to run the ball, pass the ball. Um, you know, this uh, it's going to be interesting to see what the Hillers do, whether they go right to the right to the reserves or if they try and keep the um, the heat on Medway here, at least to start the second half. I I'm guessing there's no real, you know, I don't want to say there's a message to send because I don't really think there are too many ill will games or feelings. I, I, I'm guessing that uh, yeah, the gas, well, the gas can, pedal I, comes off at 35 I, to nothing. I think I can pull out a couple names for you. Yeah. But um, as far as uh, schools, but uh, Medway's not one of them. And um, but traditionally, it's usually when they get the 40 points is when you see the uh, the change. But we'll see what happens. Here. And the kickoff to Sheehan, he takes it to about the 35 yard line. Oh, he's still going. Nah, maybe the 32 yard line. A little tough kid. He's been pressing me, Don. I would say, you know, this is a tough game so far for Medway, but the future for them, at least at those two positions, is bright with him and, uh, and Plunkett at quarterback. Well, the ones are coming out on defense, so yeah, maybe there is something to be said here. Uh, no, I, think, I think they'll probably start switching them out here as the high half goes, but, the, you know, the starters are – looks like they have number 11 warming up on the sidelines. He's Patrick Brenton. I don't know if he's a backup quarterback. Um, I'm guessing he'd be a sophomore. Patrick Brenton, a sophomore QB, 5'11", 155. He's warming up. Number 10 also is warming up. I don't know if he's catching. He's a quarterback as well. R Robbie Bernarden. And the Hill's defense is swarming to the ball. She and nowhere. Abbott's the first one off the, off the, off the pile. Picks up They're about quick. five. Hiller's defense is quick to the ball. They they really swarm tackle and uh, and again they're they're not giving up anything along the defensive line and that's that's given the linebackers and the defensive backs the opportunity to pursue and um, and really make good hard tackles. Yeah, and like I said, it's hard for us to to see numbers at, at, on the line for Medway, and I can't tell you if it's an older line or a younger night younger line, and they're trying to just develop some continuity with the line to be able to provide something for Plunkett and Sheehan, but it's a fake handoff. Plunkett up the middle gets about one, maybe. I'm not sure if this kind of offensive game plan is going to get the Medway Mustangs back into this game, Rick. It no, looks like they're... I, I don't think he's... I think his message is, uh, this isn't going to happen. I don't want to get anybody hurt kind of thing. Yeah, he's um, just looked like he might be just trying to put together a drive here and Let's get on the board. This is a big play here for them, if that's the case, third and three. Nope, too far. So it brings up fourth down and, and about two, nine, 17. That would, have, that would have taken a, a perfect pass by Plunkett. Um, he, was, he looked like he was pretty well covered by Canal over here. Um, it would have taken a perfect pass, and it wasn't. It was a little bit over his head, so now they're uh, they're punting. Yeah, I thought he was going to maybe try to shorten the game and, and run as much as he could. And Deloy is back waving every – no, it's Abbott is back waving everybody away from the kick, and it rolls about to the 18-yard line, and that'll do it. It's first and ten Hillers. Heading – Heading to the south end zone. So the ones do come back out, Don, to start the second half. Yeah, that's not, again, that's not surprising. I wouldn't, uh, I think once they get, if they put another touchdown up, that 
And, of course, once they get into the fourth quarter, I think that they'll, they'll switch them out too. But um, give the ones another shot here, and it wouldn't surprise me to see a bomb to Abbott. It feels like we've been seeing a lot of it tonight. So we got uh, two backs in the backfield with Kelleher. I can't see who it is. It's neither of them are Kelleher. I mean, are, are Ebert. And that's a run by... Is that Frank? Yeah, Frank, 21. A little crossing action coming into the middle. Just picked up about two yards, second and eight. Again, there wasn't really much of a push there. Medway continues to play tough. That 99 looks like they moved him over on the right side now. What? Well, how big is that kid? Can you find him on Number that 99, roster? 99, he's six. They say six seven, two twenty, but I'd be surprised if he's any of that. Yeah. He, uh, he's tall. He's a tall kid, though. Yeah. He's the senior. And straight ahead to Frank, and he picks up about another. Three, four yards straight up the gut. So maybe the ones are in there, but they're going to work a little bit on the running game. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be all about um, taking time off the clock at this point. And we got uh, a guest in the uh, booth here tonight, game day coordinator Scotty Mackin joining us in the booth. It's always good to have Scotty back. It's football season, and he loves football season. So it's third and about a long, say long two, three for the Hillers. And they're going to probably run as much clock as I can. You know, there's no need to really press this at this point. Kelleher's got three stacked to the right. And he rolls right. And he dumps it off to, to Luke DeLoya, who's got a first down. Just over the chains. That's all that, that pass was designed to do is... Move the chains. Yeah, Luke just kind of came from the slot position, and that's his job is just to kind of find that little opening, uh, make sure he gets across the first down, um, and then just gather in the pass, go to the ground, and there you go. You got your first down. And it wouldn't uh, surprise me here, Rick, to see a, a dive right or a dive left. I'm yeah, at this point, you probably you don't want to embarrass anybody. You're just trying to shorten up the game a little bit by running the ball and keep the clock running. A quick pitch out to Connor Ebert, who's turned back inside and taken down quickly by number 99, Don. He's showing up on the stat sheet. Isaac Rosick, again, hustling once that, puck, once that ball was turned in. Yeah, the right, uh, the right cornerback really held his ground there. Abbott was trying to block him. He didn't get the block. And, uh, and um, number 88 for Medway uh, made a nice stop there. So Looks Don, like that was loss of yardage. I, I said we've had... Uh, in Jim Gerard's era, it's it's four and three Hopkinton with 177 points, Medway 175 points. But more recently, it's swung um, it's swung Hopkinton's way with two years ago a 28 to nothing win and a Hopkinton 26 to 11 win last year. Um, and then prior to that, uh, Hopkinton won in 2011 and and in 2012. Uh, some pretty tight games, 34-28, 41-25. And I bring up those years as we have some alumni uh, in the, in the mm -hmm. stands today as we saw at halftime. Yes, we did. And it's nice to see the players come back if they're locally working or whatnot, to come back on a Friday night and support the Hillers. And we've got a couple of ex-quarterbacks in the stands. And, and, uh, and who would they be? The quarterbacks. Who are they? We got Hank Rudden. And Hank Rudden and, and, Mike, and Mike, Mike Decina back, along with uh, Star Center Jake Lehman and uh, former Captain Eric Strout. Yeah. And uh, it's good seeing those kids back and supporting the local team. And both of those quarterbacks and you know, all four players you mentioned are impressed with Mr. Kelleher and Mr. Abbott and their connection, their ability to connect, mm -hmm. and some of the speed and toughness they're displaying tonight. But uh, overall, they they're very hopeful that the Hillers have a very solid season. Yeah, I think we all are, again, um, you know, I mean, Coach Gerard and this staff, they put, they, they put a lot of work in. It's a lot of behind-the-scenes uh, the work, uh, whether it's the coaches and certainly a lot of parent support. Um, because, uh, it, it's a village to, 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 to run a football season. And, um, you know, obviously the wins and losses, you want more wins and losses, but you, you want the kids to have a positive experience. 
and uh, Gerard and his coaching staff has always provided that. So third and 12, and he overthrows, looked like Cooney maybe, um, rolling to his right, and it's going to bring up a, a fourth and, and about 12, 13 yards. I think that was, is that, is that first the first? Incompletion? Is that the first incompletion? I don't know. I, it, it may be. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I think it is, Rick. We'll have to go back to the tape. We need a stats man. I'm willing, to bet, I'm willing to bet we're missing an incomplete Please somewhere. Pu push. <laughs> you can apply You can apply at hcam.com. <laughs> yeah, 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 we'll Attention take. Mike Therosian. And the punt goes out. Brendan Kelly kicks, and it goes out of bounds around the 47-yard line of the of the Hillers. So it's the first time that Medway is going to have outstanding field position, as we talked about, that contributed to some of the scoring woes that they've had, uh, not being able to put the ball in the end zone. They just haven't been able to get drives long enough. Yeah, it looks like we have some new faces coming in here too, Rick. Um, oh, a lot of new faces. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like the twos are in on defense, which is good. So we'll get some, uh, you know, some new blood in here. So again, I see number 16 here on the corner. Number 16 being Taj Scanlon, a sophomore, uh, yeah. a junior actually. And it looks like, is that Sheehan up the middle? I don't know, but the defense, you couldn't tell they had new players in there because the defensive line did not move. Uh, they uh, they actually, you know, got penetration, and the linebackers were quick to flow. And, uh, yeah, it looked like it was the same old, same old. Uh, Hiller's defense quick to the ball, and no, not really a big gain for Medway. No, it brings up second and eight from the 45-yard line. And Sheehan is out of the game. Number one, number one, Brandon Avellino, the senior at running back. And Pluckett's pass is incomplete, brings up third and eight. 4.04 in the game. I think they might have taken Plunkett out of here. No, he was. Oh, he's coming back yeah, in, okay. He was the, yeah, there's a lot of different numbers surrounding him. Number 15, the senior, Joe Bevilacqua. Bevilacqua paving. Could be a relation. Could be. Who knows? And trip right for Plunkett. And Sheehan's back in the game. And Plunkett throws down the sideline. And it's tipped in. Incomplete. Number 16, Ty Scanlon on the, I think that's how you say his name. Is it Taj? Ty, 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 Ty? I don't know. I don't know, T. Scanlon. We'll call him T. Scanlon. T. Scanlon. He's, he's, a, he's a little kid, but he looks like he's uh, And I have a soft not, spot for the – when you say little guy, what do you mean by that? I got a soft spot for the little just guy. Just height, height, height challenged, I guess, but uh, he certainly looks like he's uh, into the game, and uh, he was certainly at position there to make that play. Size of the fight in the dog. Looks like you got Drew Nealon back in the game at, uh, at safety. Um, 20, Matt, Matt 24, Brown playing Matt the Brown. outside linebacker. And it's fourth and eight. Plunkett in the shotgun, back to pass. Oh, and he swarmed under. I mean, it's just, and he almost got out. He's a real tough kid. He's, oh, the ball, it loose. came out late. Came yeah, out they, late. Yeah, they blew the whistle. It came out late, and hopefully he's not hurt, but that was a tough, he was yeah. scrambling around. He had no chance. Yeah, you had Tyler Doherty in there. He had uh, number 12. Um, Brendan Kelly, yeah, the whole host of players. Number 53, Tommy Lincoln, looks like he got in there. So the Hiller defense has not missed a step uh, putting the twos in. And it looks like the offense has, uh, we got a new quarterback in here, Robbie Bernardin. Number 10, yeah, number Robbie 10. Bernardin, number 10. And, oh, that, yeah, there yeah. could have been a little something going on. People were going forward, people were going back. Well, the the receiver here didn't have his mark, and then uh, he got moved back, and the play had already started. So that's uh, offensive uh, movement on the Hillers. Yeah, I think what it is is that the, the tight end has to be covered up, and he was covered up by the inside guy, and the outside guy was also on the line of scrimmage. So he had to be in the backfield, and he was trying to back him up, but it was too late. Yeah. yeah. Well, the tackle, actually, tight end, the tackle has to tackle be covered. Tackle had to be covered. And he was covered by two. 
We're supposed to have four guys in the uh, in the backfield. Is that correct? Is this a quiz? Yeah. I think I believe so. Yes. Yes. Number 34 carrying the ball for the first time tonight. Straight up the middle, Drew Saparosius. It's like he was running hard, number 34, the gain of a couple. So let's talk a little bit about what's coming up for the future of the Hiller schedule as we have a, an away game against Bishop Fian next Friday, 9-22. At, at Bishop Fian. I don't I think that's in uh, Attleboro or North Attleboro um, and then they're open up the TVL large uh, as I had mentioned earlier that the Medway is no longer in the Tri-Valley League large they're in the Tri-Valley League small and Norton has taken their place I don't know if that happened this year I certainly noticed it this year I don't know if it happened this year or last year I, th I think it's this year this is the because Norton had always been in the small um, even though they have progressively gotten better over the years, um, yeah. and so yeah, they're they're up in they're definitely up in the large here. And we can, we can talk a little bit about the as uh, Bobby Bernardin gets ready to take the snap, he hands off to number 34 Saparosius. The, the the alignment within the MIA has gotten real screwy now. Um, all kinds of divisions. It goes all the way to Division 8, and I believe Millis is in Division 8. But uh, in the TVL Large, Hoppington is Division 4 South. Westwood is Division 4 South. And the remaining teams, Holliston, Norton, and Medfield, are in the Division 5 South. Um, Medway, I just noted, it happens to be in Division 6 South, which I'm guessing is most of the small TVL, uh, including Ashland, which is our mm -hmm. Turkey Day... Uh, Opponent. Oh, this is great. Can we start talking about Turkey Not Day already? Not a little early. A little oh, early. Come on. Let's, let's keep it. Uh, I know it's a big oh. tradition. Uh, Don, you're from the Pittsburgh area. Did, did you have uh, Thanksgiving Day football in no. your area? No. Nope. There, there was Thanksgiving football, but not like that weekend. It would be the state playoffs normally. They started earlier. Um, the the high school season starts usually before Labor Day there, and it usually wraps up. Thanksgiving weekend, you have the uh, the playoffs. Yeah. So there is football, but not on Thanksgiving Day. This is unique to New England. Oh, it's awesome. That's I, a great I, tradition. I mean, I, I played in three of them as a young lad. Um, came out in the losing end twice, so um, wasn't happy about that. But uh, oh, it's a great tradition. Uh, we've had some great. We've had some some seen some great games here over the years. But uh, before we get there, we got a lot of games to play uh, before we host Ashland, and hopefully, it's a a banner game when we get there. There's a, a fumble on There's the play. There's a touchdown, Hillers. Hillers, is it 53? I don't know who bounced on it. 52, either 50. 52 or 53. I'm going to go with Tom Lincoln. Yeah. Let's see. Do I see a 50? Is there even a 53 out there? No. Yeah. Oh, no, it's Tommy Lincoln, I yeah, guess. Yeah, I'm giving Tommy Lincoln the touchdown. Okay, there you go. And if it's wrong, if it's the wrong person, and while you're watching the video, you can complain to Mike Terosian at HKM TV. <laughs> Yeah, no, it looks like it's see somebody's getting uh oh, I just saw Coach Gerard smile, he's clapping, yep, he's I happy. I can tell you that's a yeah, you know it's uh it's he's kinda relaxing a little bit now. You know how football coaches are, they can't oh, get, yeah, it's always, our job to put the put the cart in front of the horse, right? They, they can't do that. Football coaches are always crabby and paranoid, but that's just the way that's just their makeup and I can certainly understand it, trust me. Um So this is what you don't like to see, right? You you <laughs> You can't lose focus of what's going on here in the game. We just go to touchdown. Let's get it ready. Let's go. Yeah, that was uh, yeah, because Lincoln came off. He came off celebrating, and uh, turns out he's on the extra point team. So they had to run him <laughs> back out there and say, uh, "You might want to curb your enthusiasm uh, here." Hoppy took a timeout because uh, the, the kicker was, I think, looking for the uh, the little t uh, the block to kick off of, and he was late getting out in the field. So the Hillers take a timeout with 48. Seconds remaining in the third quarter, and it's 41 to nothing. Now we can say this game is 41 to nothing, but I, I'm guessing just from what I'm seeing tonight, Don Medway is going to be somebody to deal with in in a year or two. Uh, as I said earlier in the broadcast, it looks like they got pretty good numbers, and they're playing a lot of juniors and sophomores, and 
you know, we'll see what happens in a year or two. Yeah, plus this, again, this is their seems to be their first season for dropping down into the TVL small. And let's just see. I mean, it, it seems like they played Norton kind of tough last week. Let's see how they do when they're banging heads against the uh, against Ashland and Millis and the other smaller teams. We'll see how they do. Yeah, you know what's interesting? You know, we say TVL large and TVL small and Division 5, Division 6. You know, the enrollment, and you can find these numbers up on the MIA, MIAA website. I don't know. You know, it could be a difference of 50 students. You know, I don't even know what the number. I don't think they're that great in terms of you know, large and small. Maybe a Millis is very small, but the, the other towns are probably pretty close to the same enrollments. I think it's it's a straight numbers thing. Yeah. I, you know, it's it, it, they draw a line here, and that you know, the, this yeah. school goes here, this school goes there. It's a, it's a straight numbers thing. And if because um, a lot of the other um, school or teams for Hopkinton um, have moved up, the girls have all moved up. Uh, girls volleyball is playing at Division One for their playoffs. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, field hockey, I believe, has popped up to Division One. I know soccer, and I, and again, this is just hearing people chat about it. Um, our our enrollment with girls is larger than boys yep. so that's what popped us up into the girl sports playing d1 yep, so yep. it'll be interesting to see how those other teams fare no i mean it's it's probably the right thing to do um although i do miss the traditional rivalries within the tri-valley league well, I, I think you're, uh, you still got a couple out there i see a team uh, that starts with a w it's called westwood that we don't really like them well they, i've never liked westwood and, uh, that uh, was our rival back in i'm and, a i know i hate this that other hate, team this is the word you hate to hear that that hall is <laughs> that team. other team that red team we don't really yeah. like them either and uh, well, at least i don't some of us do yeah. and now that my boys are no longer at hopkins and high i can give them oh, a little more go. attention oh my gosh and is that Sheehan takes the kickoff. Uh, Brendan Kelly put it all the way down to about the two-yard line, and Sheehan brought it all the way up to about the 35, maybe just short of the 35. Well, so now here we are, 42 nothing. I mean, no matter whether you're Medway or Hopkinton, yeah, I don't think – I'm surprised Sheehan was in the game. Well, I mean – I mean, You yeah. want to make sure you keep him healthy. To, right, but he's also the sophomore too, right? That's I mean, right. He's you know, a kid. Yep, you're right. Who do we got? No, they, got uh, they changed up the quarterback. Number 12 is um, a junior Sam the Pillow, And is it number one that's uh, in the backfield? A little counter, and off he goes up the middle. Number one being Brendan Avellino. Uh, it looks like he had a pretty good burst there. Um, yeah, he did a little, little counter step the other way and came right up the middle. Yeah, there was a seam there. Um, it got all the way to the second level, and uh, you had uh, Nealon and uh, look like, I can't see who's in the middle there. Who's 32? He came over, I think. Colin McGibbon. You know, what's funny is the offenses have, uh, and that brings us to the end of the third quarter with the Hillers after the fumble. Um, are up 42 to nothing as we head into the fourth quarter. All right, the class of 2019 50 50 raffle winning ticket 771 7888. Ticket number 7717. Hillers cheerleaders get their workout today. Yeah, are they I think they might have pulled the plug on the on the um, <laughs> on the, the push-ups. Yeah, only too many uh, too many injuries on the uh, on the push-ups. That gets to be quite a bit. Yeah, this is at this point now. You just uh, you want to get out of here with um, no injuries, get a bunch of playing time in, and. Uh, so. So Medway comes up, number 12, the new quarterback, Sam DePillo, hands off to Avellino, and he's immediately met by Tyler Doherty, number 26, 26. Tyler Doherty. And Tyler, they got him in a down position at the nose tackle. He just beat his man one-on-one, -on -one and uh, and just uh, that was a nice tackle for loss. 
Yeah, well. Oh, was it a loss? Uh, uh, oh, yeah, it was, yeah. It's third and. Third and about two, three. 10 33 left in the, in the game, likely, the fourth quarter. Yeah, sometimes that quickness on the line, you know, is better than having the size. And that's exactly what happened there, Don, as you said. And we're going to have a timeout Medway, I'm guessing. The fire official blowing his whistle. Timeout Medway. Are you keeping track of the, the No, you know, at or? this point it doesn't really matter. It's 42 to nothing. I'll, they'll let the clock run and take a penalty, I'm guessing. Well, I, I, you know, th you would think that Medway is going to want to, you know, get that goose egg off the board. Um, and, again, you just, at this point with them, you want to just be building on something positive. You know, make a positive play. Just... Just, you know, finish strong. You know, this is what you want to be telling your kids there in, in the huddle and, and on the sidelines. Just, you know, let's make one positive play and take it from there. Yeah, and the, and the thing here is that um, as uh, the pillow takes the keeper, he, he faked the pitch and went straight up the middle, and it's going to be fourth and about a yard. And they, they're going to go for it. I mean, why not? But I, I think you're right. You just got to keep it, keep it positive. Learn a few things from this game. Uh, the only thing that, you know, that, that it's unfortunate when you run the spread offense that you don't keep on throwing the ball anymore. Right. You know, so you, you're, you're not practicing that. You're not sure. practicing that. You're, you're, you know, you're spreading it out still, but running. Oh, I almost dropped the snap, and that probably threw up the... Threw off the timing of play. Sam DePillo had the snap, but he kind of dropped it and then had to kind of scramble. And, and and Medway Mustangs turned the ball over on downs. Yeah, the, 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 the Hiller defensive line is taking the line of scrimmage and moving it two yards into Medway's territory. Um, they're firing off the ball. Medway's having a tough time blocking them. There always seems to be more Hillers uh, at the point of attack. Uh, then there are Medway Mustangs. So that was a turnover on downs, and here we go. You know, Hiller's uh, right where their field position's been all game, right at midfield. <laughs> now, this is even better than what they've had. They're at the 38-yard line of the Mustangs, 9.20 left, 42 to nothing on the scoreboard. And number 34, Drew Saparosius, goes off left, tackle, left, left side and gets nothing. Yeah, Medway had him stacked up. It looked like they had, I thought this kid over here, number 54, was offsides. He was starting to blitz, and he, he could have been close, but. I don't think they're calling penalties anymore because I've seen a few holds <laughs> that they're, they're not calling. <laughs> I stopped pointing them out a couple couple series ago. So it's a standard two wide receivers to each side, and it's just running it up the gut. Is that, is that Chaparocious again? I yeah, I'm trying to I'll pull, pull out some numbers here, give yeah, some kids some. Airtime. We got number 60 is uh, Garrett Powers. We got 68, Reese Griffiths, the, the, the sophomore. 56, Lucas Monahan. Um, looks like he's a junior. He's got some height, 6'4. 57, that's the kicker. Pugliaka, he's a left tackle right now. Hopefully, nobody steps on his foot. <laughs> You know, my Saparosha's get stacked up and be fourth in a, a long ways. It, it's funny you said it. You know, I think I've told the story before. My dad played for Framingham in the late 40s, and back in the day, there weren't really specialists, guys that kick. And well, I said, well, how did you guys, you know, how did you get your punter? How did you get your kicker? He said, well, we lined up everybody on the 50-yard line, and the coach looked at everybody's legs, and he took the three guys with the biggest legs and said, you're going to try to kick. <laughs> and, that, and that's how it works. <laughs> Yeah, I think they do a little, but uh, a little bit more detail nowadays. <laughs> well, that was leather helmet time, right? That know? was certainly leather helmet. <laughs> oh yeah. A nice kick by Kelly, and it's picked up by Sheehan. He runs right by a would-be tackler, gets out to about the 21-yard line. Nice-looking tackle here. Who's this running off? 51. Made that tackle. Cal Cousins. That's a nice form tackle that kid just made right there. So here we go. Now it's uh, it's 42. It looks like um, Michael Decina's uh, record of six touchdowns is safe for now. 
Well, I'm not sure he didn't go down and get into Coach uh, Sullivan's ear. <laughs> he might have. He was <laughs> complaining about it at halftime. But I'll tell you this, though. They throw the ball a lot more today than they did yes. even seven years ago. Oh, yeah. Or I don't well, know how many years ago For this particular game, they have. And, and a lot of that could be attributed to, again, uh, you know, the both running backs coming off injury. It could have been something that they had seen from Medway. It looks like, hey, you know what? It might be a little tough to run on these guys. Let's throw. Because even when they were running, they were doing it outside with jet sweeps or bubble screens. Right, right. Yeah, and a lot of the early passing was just, like you said earlier, was an extension of the run game, just a a quick quick pass to get the receiver one-on-one -on -one or let them start to shift around and, and do their thing. But, yeah, that, that game had – that game was different in the sense of what it meant and how close it was and that yes. kind of thing. And the blowout wins, that's, it's tough to do that because the kids do sit, either sit at halftime or shortly after like they just did today. That ball falls in no man's land. I think it was intended for number 15, Joe Bevilacqua. So it brings up a third and about, we'll call it nine. Third and eight. 625 left in the fourth quarter. Hill was up 42 to nothing. And the atmosphere has got a little more subdued as this game is worn on. Yeah, I think the kids are starting to uh, kind of filter out. And um, there's, uh, looks like the stands have thinned out a little bit. You know, uh, you know how it goes with uh, lopsided games. The crowd likes to get home or get to their next Next thing you're doing on a Friday night, Rick, yeah, whatever, which I whatever don't that know. Might uh, whatever so I, that might be. So I was be. told, um, I didn't know it was a blackout tonight, but both of us are wearing black. Yeah, it was a good good call on our parts. And, uh, you know, the student the section doing their thing with the, the blackout and the band. I mean, I, I tell you what, I, if anybody in the band listens to this, I love having the band. Makes all the difference in the world. At the game. It's just, it's just awesome. You know, everybody gets into it, and the band starts playing, especially when it starts at the beginning. And, uh, you know, if they just kept on playing, that would be, be all right. Well, you all know, right by it, me. It's a, it, it seems to be you don't see a lot of them. It, it, at the high school games, you don't see bands all that often. And even at the, you know, certainly at the, at the large collegiate level, the D1, you'll see them. But at these D2, D3 games, you know, yeah. they're not that common. Sometimes, you know, when they do have them, it's a special thing. Yeah. And uh, it's a, it, it really adds to the atmosphere. And the Hopkinton band always does a great job. And it's it's I'm always disappointed when they are not here. Yeah, when they're not here, you know. And I understand that sometimes those instruments get cold and it's not easy right. late in the year. Right. But uh, I mean, I love I love hearing the band. I, I think the, hopefully I'm not alone in that in the sense of it, it can really get people juiced up. It just it, it makes all the difference in the atmosphere. So Medway punted. It was a nice punt actually of about almost 50 yards. The Hillers take over at 5:34 on their own. 35-yard line handoff to Saparosius and goes, or is that Zach? No, Saparosius goes nowhere. Yeah, Saparosius. He lost, uh, lost, about, lost about five. Saparosius might want to talk to his lineman and say, hey, guys, I know what the score is, but we're uh, as far as we're concerned, we're 0-0, zero to zero and you're getting me killed back here. So we got a new, uh, new quarterback coming in, number 11, Patrick Brenton. Breton. Patrick Breton at call of signals, number 11. And he hands off the Saparosius. Oh, he fakes the Saparosius and he picks up about three yards on his own. Medway's still playing tough. I mean, they're you know they're coming hard for crashing from the, their end positions. Is that 99 still out there? Is that him? He just uh, he's 79. No, I don't know. 99's where I'm looking at him. He's there. Oh, 99. Yeah, you know they're, yeah. they're playing. Okay, so they seven's playing. They still got a bunch of their starters there, so they're. I just see Kelleher go back in number 10. <laughs> That was last year, wasn't it? I know, Kelleher's five. I'm yeah. sorry, okay. Or his brother was 10, I don't know, but. Who's this to the right here? Is that 86 or 88? 88. Oh, lost his helmet, you gotta come out. Number 88, Tommy Hamblett, wide receiver to the right. Robbie Bernardin was taken down, and that brings up a fourth and 10. 4.06 left in the fourth quarter. Hill is up 42 to nothing. What a great way to start off the home season after a nail biter last week at Wayland. The Hillers will move to 2 0 as they go to Bishop Fian, a team we don't know much about. 
I mean, um, just looking at this schedule here, Rick, I'm not sure what we, you know, we don't know anything about Bishop Fee. And, again, you know, with high school football, every year is different. And it kind of, un- you know, you watch it unfold. Um, then you got, you know, you go down to Med- Medfield, and that's never an easy place to play. We have had some success in Medfield over the years. Um, but it's always a close game, and they always are well coached, and they, uh, you know, always have a bunch of good athletes. And then Westwood, uh, Westwood's 0 and 1. I don't know. Do we know who they I lost? I don't to know who they year? played, but they lost their coach. Uh, coach Manti is at Framingham. Okay. So it's a new system. You know, whatever it is, whether yep. they have good players or not, you, you've got you got a new system, a new coach. You got to get used to and mm-hmm. that kind of thing. So you never know what you got there, and that's always a tough a tough team. And we'll have that here in uh, on uh, at home. And then you're going to go at Norton, which, um, you know, they're, they're new to the TVL large. And Norton always has a bunch of tough yeah, kids. Yeah, they seem pretty tough. They, they're tough to play sometimes. And, and I don't know. I know you know that field down there, Rick. Oh, it's and, a mess. Oh, jeez. It's like a, it's a cow pasture. And number one, Brendan Avellino makes his way a big gain across the, across the hill or into Hiller territory at the 47 yard line. Nice run. And then you finish up the regular, at least the uh, the, the scheduled schedule, um, at least the teams that we know we're going to play. We finish up at Holliston on October 20th here at 7 o'clock. So we'll obviously have a feeling on where we are, where the Hillers are at that point. And, you know, I'm sure that'll be proven to be a, a big game like it always is. Yeah, it'll be nice to finally. Get into the wind column against them is, oh, a lot of trouble there in the backfield. As uh, the pillow was run into by his own running back, dropped the ball, but I think he fell on it. Well, having, having gone through the schedule here, I could tell you what, uh, what Coach Gerard would be telling us is yeah. let's take one game at yeah, a time. Yeah, we're going to Bishop Fian. We're, going, we're on to Bishop Fian. We're no, not worried about I, I think I was, I was talking to a few folks, and, you know, when we talk about, you know, we hear this, hear that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I heard a few names. Um, I don't know if, what it means in terms of, um, players at uh, Bishop Fian, but um, it might be a, a kid by the last name of Bruski hmm. playing on that team. Okay. And if any of you local people used to see Teddy Bruski, there's a, a couple of clips of him with his, his I think he has three sons, uh, running and, and playing just before one of the Super Bowls. So they were, you know, probably between four and, you know, one and four years old or whatever. They must be getting old enough now to play at the high school level. Well, wouldn't uh, I? Uh, Bishop Fian is down in that area, yeah. you know, the yeah. North Attleboro down that yeah. way. So it certainly could be a match. And then uh, I, I heard the name Fior, uh, Christian Fury, uh, Fourier. 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 Fourier yeah. Tight, tight end. I don't know if he has a son, but I heard that name as well. Um, well Rick, you might want to get down there with your autograph book and <laughs> get the guys at <laughs> Teddy Bruschi is one of my favorite all-time Patriots, by the way. All right. And he was one of those overachievers, as they say. Very tough player. Overcame a stroke and came back to play. Ooh. Oh, nice cut. Avellino tackled by number 26, Mr. Doherty, Tyler Doherty on the tackle. Yeah, Tyler's all over the field here coming from his nose nose, uh, nose tackle position. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you, that they had a nice pull there, number 69. Kind of sent our, our kicker there. Um, Kind of put him down on his back. <laughs> so, you know, these kids are still out there playing hard. I could tell you that much. There's only a minute left, but when they snap the ball, both these uh, Hillers and Mustang football players are playing hard right to the end, and that's great to see. Yeah, you know, I mean, the coaches, you know, that's their job, right, to keep you motivated, make sure you're working hard. Absolutely. One of the things, I had a coach who once said that uh, there were three things that take no talent, and one of those things was to work hard. Yep. Okay, Medway. Well, they they might try to, you know, you, you might be on to something. Here. They might be trying to get that goose egg. The clock yeah. stops quickly as they get the first down. The quarterback runs over, gets his play, but they just started the clock as they set the chains. And they do a lot of pulling with their linemen. Their linemen are on the move well, a you, good you, bit. You, well, you know what? I mean, sometimes you you know if you're not quick enough to 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 get to somebody, that's how you set the angle, right? I mean, you pull them and. It's not easy to practice, though. I'm guessing that the timing with all that stuff is, yeah. you know, at the high school level, it's difficult to practice. Whoop. Nice pick out of the air on the snap. Throws to 14. Is that Pratt? That is Ryan Pepin, the senior wide receiver. 
That was a nice pass. Uh, he came back for the ball. He was well covered. Um, yeah. <laughs> came back for the ball, and looks like this is going to be the last yeah, play. Yeah, I Rick. thought maybe they might take a couple timeouts to try to get that goose egg off, but well, apparently not. You know, they didn't. Uh, they didn't stop the clock on the first down. No. I thought uh, that they would. He got it off. Oh, and yeah, that does That's it. Number do it. 56 was it? Number 56, Lucas Moynihan on the tackle. So that does it for the Hill. So as a quick wrap, we had uh, Kelleher with five touchdowns. Kelleher to Abbott, Kelleher to Ionelli, Kelleher to Abbott, Kelleher to Linquist, Kelleher to Abbott. That seems like what the uh, the uh, norm's going to be here. Um, Frank Kelleher had a lot of pass yards tonight, and uh, we ended up having the final touchdown. We're giving it to Tom Lincoln, who recovered a fumble in the third quarter to make the final score of 42 to nothing. So... For Don Lehman and the crew of John Ritz, Bob Hamilton, Tom Diggs, producer Mike Tarosian, I am Rick DeSena, and we will see you at the next home game, which will be Friday, October 6th? Nope, Fr se uh, September 26th. September 26th. No, I'm no, sorry. No, 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 no. You're right. Friday, October 6th, 7 p.m. versus Westwood here, Chick Welsh Field, Dave Hughes Stadium. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone.